Okay, in lab workshop 1B, part 1, we're going to learn how to create a histogram in Excel. So in your lab tab, again, go to resources, lab workshop 1B, and we will open the data file. Okay, in the worksheet here it says SAT scores and GPA. We've got three columns of numbers. We, we're going to enable editing on this sheet. Uh, and these are SAT scores, so a verbal SAT score, math SAT score, and the GPA average for a number of students. I believe there's 200 students. So 200 students we have data on. So as a way of summarizing this data, we can create what's called a histogram. A histogram is also known as a frequency, a frequency distribution for the data. So we want to create a histogram of the verbal scores. So histogram is one of the tools in our data analysis tool pack. So we go to the data tab at the top over on the right hand side uh, is our data analysis tool, tool pack. The first thing we have to do though before we go to that is we have to create our bins because we're going to ask Excel to take each piece of data and put it in a correct bin. So I'm going to put my bins here and in your instruction sheet we're given the upper bounds of the bins. So the first bin is going to have an upper bound of 450. So that first bin will take in any verbal scores that are less than or equal to 450. Then we put in 500. So the second bin will be scores between 450 and 500, including 500, and then 550, 600, 650, 700, and 750. So those are, those are the bins that I want to use for my histogram. Now I'll go and I'll open the data analysis tool pack. I'll find the histogram tool. I'll open it up. And again, with all of these data analysis tools, the first thing that Excel wants to know is the input. So it wants to know my input range. So what data do I want to analyze using this histogram? So I will show it all of the verbal scores. So all the way down to row 201. And then the next thing it wants to know is my bin range. So I click in the box for bin range. I go back up and I show it my bins. Now in this case, I didn't include row one when I was selecting my data, so I have not included labels. So I will leave the label box unchecked. And then my output, again, I have a choice. I could put it in a new worksheet, in a new workbook, but I will choose an output range. So I'll, choose, I'll click on output range. I'll click in the box here, and I will choose a location for my output right there. Now at the bottom we usually have some options. So I can have I can make a sorted histogram here where it would take whatever bin has the most scores in it and place it first and then the then the bin with the second most and then the bin with the third most etc. But I don't really I don't want that and I don't want cumulative percentage. I just want I do want chart output. So I will say OK. And what appears here is it's repeated my bins. It's actually added a, another bin for more than 750 because it did find five scores that were over 750. So this is the frequency distribution, which, which, is, our, which is the data we use for our histogram. If I look at the chart, I can adjust the sizing of this chart. 
Um, I don't need a legend because I know that the, the y-axis is labeled as frequency. Um, down on the x-axis, this is actually the verbal score that we are charting. And then I can call, change the title and say histogram of verbal scores or verbal SAT scores. And we see that it follows sort of what would it, we would expect as far as um, the shape of the diagram. It seems to be following something like a normal distribution. The one th in the lecture, I did mention that uh, by the convention is that if it's a histogram, we don't want any spaces between the bars. So I can adjust this uh, chart by clicking on one of the bars and it selects all of the bars. If I go to Format Data Series, the very first uh, page that comes up here on Series Options has gap width. So I can go and slide, put the slider over and say no gap. I will close that up. So there's my histogram of, of verbal SAT scores. That's how you create a histogram in Excel.